now the topic is indian architecture so in this topic of uh, subject art and architecture we are going to study about the indian architecture so it's a quick revision uh, time so first of all architecture basically means that uh, art and science of designing a structures Indian architecture is rooted in the history, culture, and religion of India. The story of uh, Indian architecture is uh, also a story of evolution of I V C to British uh, rule in India, and this all uh, development of ar architecture we will see here. Uh, the first is the architecture of uh, I V C. Uh, then after. Uh, we will see the development of architecture in the mughal period then after uh, post maurya architecture then indo islamic architecture and then modern architecture so while discussing about the uh, architecture of i i v c uh, this one is indus valley civilization so in this harappa mohenjodaro uh, ropar kalibangan lothal rangpur this all sites and uh, their development as we know that uh, we have seen a lot of uh, development uh, in that uh, civilization also uh, the town of this civilization uh, were laid out in a rectangular grid pattern well and uh, uh, smaller uh, lower towns are also there uh that is called the uh, uh, lower town and the uh, actually upper uh, or uh, i can say that uh, with some height and elevation is also there which is called citadel so this type of basically uh, architecture uh, had been seen uh, in that of the ivc okay so um रेक्टेंगुलर पैटर्न ग्रिड पैटर्न में है एंड रोड्स आर कटिंग इच अदर एट द नाइंटी डिग्री मेन राइट एंगल देन आफ्टर बॉन्ट मड ब्रिक ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड डायमेंशन एंड लेयर ऑफ ब्रिक्स वेर ज्वाइन टूगेदर बाय द जिप्शम मोटार we will see the cities uh, were also equipped with the advanced drainage system with the small drains from each other houses uh, are connecting to the bigger uh, drains and this uh, drains uh, were uh, covered loosely to allow uh, regular cleaning and maintenance so such a development kind of development are being seen in that of the ivc says peaks at regular interval and uh, presence of well were also been observed there there okay uh, now for storage granaries had been a strategic air ducts and uh, raised platform to protect from the pests now mohenjodaro having uh, the great bath and it was equipped with the uh, galleries and rooms indicating the importance of the ritual cleanings and the cities were divided into the two divisions mainly a uh, citadel and lower town so basically citadel were uh, located in the western part and lower town were uh, present or located in the eastern part where its citadel uh, were smaller in size than a uh, lower towns and uh, it is basically for uh, uh, hosting large buildings like granaries administrative buildings and uh, having pillared hall residence of the rulers and aristocrats uh, and courtyard also now in lower town it is uh, basically uh, in size it is larger and it is located in the eastern part and it contains a small one uh, room houses probably for working class of people so this kind of divisions uh, were seen in the uh, ivc well uh, now these are the divisions as i have uh, okay 
now uh, this is all about the maurya architecture uh, yeah maurya architecture if we talk so maurya architecture uh, are basically uh, influenced by the buddhism and jainism sects all right so uh, this uh, is basically divided into the two parts that is the court art and popular art now once again court art is divided into three uh, categories that is the palaces pillars and stupas whereas the popular art is uh, categorized into the cave architecture pottery and sculpture so palaces uh, of the mauryan period we will basically uh, see that ashoka's palace at kumrar uh we will uh, find that it was a three story massive wooden structure with a high central pillar now uh, the next p- uh, palaces of uh, chandragupta maurya were inspired by the uh, akamenid palaces at uh, uh, persepolis in iran as per megasthenes it was one of the greatest creation of the mankind uh now uh, we will see about the pillars so let me uh let me show actually uh so yeah palace is just uh, i have discussed that it is kumrar palace uh of ashoka and uh, palaces of uh, chandragupta maurya influenced by the akamenid palaces at uh, perspelis Uh, Perse Palace in Iran. Now, while talking about the pillar, let me uh, tell you that pillars basically uh, were built as a symbol of the state and uh, to commemorate battle victories, like uh, Ashoka's having a lot of the pillars inscriptions found there. Uh, and these pillars were made up of the Chunar sandstone. and this pillar is made up of the four part basically that is a, a shaft uh, and uh, mm, we can categorize, categorize this like uh, this is the four part first one is the shaft capital abacus and capital figure so what is shaft basically it form the base and it is made of the single piece of a stone or we can say monolith now capital it lay above the shaft and could be either lotus shaped or bell shaped the bell shaped pillar influenced by iranian pillars are known as um, are known for their lustrous and polished finish now we will talk about the abacus on the top of the capital uh, there was a circular or rectangular base that is uh, actually called abacus on which animal figures were placed now capital uh, figure uh, there are usually figures of animals like uh, bull lion and capital uh, elephants it is okay so some of the pillars we will see uh, which are existing with the capital figures were found in basara bakhira well this one is basara bakhira then lorya nandangarh Uh, and rampurva bull we will find this all three basically in in bihar and then santisha and sharna thing dupi now we will talk about national emblem so the apakas and loin capital uh, is a part of sarnath pillar uh that formed the official national emblem uh, in this abacus of sarnath pillar four animal are present and that represent the four directions a horse is in the west an elephant is in the east a bull in the south and a lion in the north the abacus there which uh, has depiction of a chakra that is v and it having uh, 24 spokes in all the four directions 
Now the elephant, which basically depicts the dream of Queen Maya, the mother of Buddha, and the bull depicts a zodiac sign uh, in which month Buddha was born. Uh, that is Taurus. The horse represents the Buddha's horse Kanthak, which uh, he used uh, for going away from the princely life. And the lion shows the attainment of enlightenment. Now the pillar capital was built by Asoka commemorating Dharm Chakra Parivartan, the first chairman by the Buddha. Now four lions that symbolizes Buddha's spreading Dhamma in all directions. Uh, in this national emblem, the word Satyamiv Jayate from the Mundika of Nisit meaning truth alone triumph, are inscribed below the abacus in Devanagari a script. Now we will talk about the uh, Asoka pillars and uh, Akameni uh, pillar which has basically a few differences and Asoka pillars um, were uh, about to be uh, derived from there. It is assumed that so yeah this is a difference between a sofa pillar uh, basically uh, a Kamenian pillar was built uh, around 600 to 400 BC and a Sokan pillar um, during uh, 300 BC a Sokan pillar is made up of the sandstone or local stones whereas a Kamenian pillars is made up of the limestone, sandstone and local uh, sandstone. Now a Sokan pillar is of single monolithic shaft, whereas a Kamenian pillar having tall uh, hutted shaft with elaborate capital. A Sokan pillar basically are associated with the Buddhism Whereas Achaemenian pillar are associated with the Zoroastrian and the Persian culture. Now Asokan pillar, the capital uh, sculptures of lions, elephant and bulls. These animals are depicted there. Whereas in Achaemenian pillar, no capital, only images of humans are engraved on the south. Well, now we will talk about the stupas. A stupas basically are burial moons, moons and uh, are conventional representation of a funeral mold in which relics and ashes of the dead are kept. Through the being pre-Buddhist, stupas were popularized by the Buddhist. Patron of a stupa, patron ranged from lay devotees to Gahapatis and the kings. Now, we will describe some uh, a specification about the stupas. So basically, the features of a stupa is described uh, as a uh, Buddhist stupa is a hemispherical dome with a solid structure. The core of the stupa basically made of the unburnt brick, while the outer surface has been uh, made of burnt brick. It consists of a circular cylindrical drum with the haramika, harmika and chhatri on the top. It is surrounded by a circumambulatory passage or pradakshina path where devotees walk around. The whole structure was also surrounded by the wooden railing and the gateways are called Turanas. Buddha's life event like the birth, renunciation, enlightenment, dharam chakra paribhartan and mahaparinirvana were depicted through the symbols like lotus, elephant, jataka stories. A few inscriptions mentioning the name of the artisan such as Kanha at Pithal Pora 
uh, on Satmala range in Western Ghats and his disciple Balaka at Kondani Caves near Lonavala in Maharashtra. Now we'll talk about the important stupas in which stupas constructed over the relics of Buddha, mainly Rajguri, Vaishali, Vedha, Dipa and Pava in Bihar and Kapil Vastu, Alakappa, Ramagrama are in Nepal, whereas Kusinagar people won in UP and uh, others uh, others uh, relics or, or stupas are also there including Avanti and Gandhara which are outside the Gangetic Valley uh, Bharut, Bodhgaya, Amravati and Nagarjuna Konda were other important sites also there. Now we'll talk about Sanchi Stupa in which uh, uh, Sato Stupa having three main stupas there. It's a world heritage site. And it lies to the west of the uh, Betawa River in Raisin district near Bhopal. Now let me explain that this is also the question of UPSC 2021. Well, so it having the three main stupas. Stupa first is the Presumed to have the relics of the stupa. Stupa 2 contain the relics of 10 less famous arhats. Arhats basically who have attained enlightenment belonging to three different generations. Their names are found on the relic caskets. Now stupa 3 has the relics of Sariputta and uh, Mahamogalyana the two chief disciple of the Buddha. Originally the stupa was a small brick structure that expanded over a period. Later it was covered with stone and surrounded by Vedika and Purana gateways. The Asoka lion capital pillar with an inscription is found on the southern side of the stupa. There is also the upper Pradakshinapat which is unique to it, this site. The four gateways are decorated profusely with uh, a sculpture. These sculptures at Sachi, despite being a small in dimension, are very naturalistic. There are guard, guardian images on pillars and the Shal Bhanjika, uh, which is lady holding the branch of the trees. Uh, this kind of a sculptures are remarkable in the treatment in the treatment of the volume. The art of the stupa reached its climax during the period of Soka. These were all about the court uh, art, uh, which having uh, the category of palaces, pillars, and stupas. Now we will talk about the popular art. Basically, uh, popular art uh, which is including a sculpture, ceramics and cave constructions across via local support. These were characterized as forms of look, uh, popular art where uh, cave architecture, uh, sculptures and pottery are basically classified and in rock, rock cut cave architecture emerged during the Maurya period, were well, generally used as uh, Biharas. Biharas were living quarters used by the Jain and Buddhist monks. Uh, the cave were characterized by highly polished uh, interior and decorative gateways. So, let me. Uh, So this is the categorization of popular art. The first one is the cave architecture in which Chatya and Viharas were basically. Chatya is the a hall and Viharas is the living quarter. Now earlier uh, it was uh, belonging to the Ajivika sect. 
but later it um, converted to the buddhist key now there is the two kind of uh, uh, two kind of it uh, the first one is the barabar hills having four caves namely lomas rishi shuda shudama karan chopper and the viswakarma well and the next one is the viswakarma now in nagarjuni a uh, three of the caves are present there namely uh, vedathi ka kumbha kumbha uh, vapi ka kumbha and gopi ka kumbha so this three are the category of uh, nagarjuni caves and nagarjuni caves belonging to the dasaratha whereas barabar cave uh, barabar hills belonging to the asoka uh, which is basically built by asoka okay now uh, uh, rishi lomas rishi caves uh, basically it's been the question of well it's been the question of prelims 2013 so uh, this is basically donated by asoka to the ajivika sets basically now when we'll talk about the pottery so pottery of the maurya period is basically uh, known as the nadan black polished ware so this is written as np bw and they were characterized by black paint and highly lustrous finish and uh, were considered as uh the highest level of the uh, pottery of that period now the sculptures were primarily used for the decoration of the stupas in the toranas medhi and as form of the religious expression the sculpture of the maurya period are related to all the three religions basically jainism hinduism and the buddhism uh the earliest mention of the yakshis can be uh, found in silpadikaran well this is all uh, belonging to the maurya period now we will next uh, uh, see the post maurya architecture so in this post maurya architecture the art of the uh, this period reflected the changing socio political scenario which had uh, been carried forward by the uh, these all dynasties shunga uh, kanwa kushana shakas in the north and uh, satvahana ikchavakus aviras and vakatakas in the southern and western india uh, first of the type is rocket caves this period uh, saw the development of two type of caves basically that is the chatya and biharas and uh, this was the also the question of upsc kade thati so these caves were generally decorated with the human and animal figures they also had courtyard and stone a screened wall now what is the basic difference of the chatya and vihara so vihara is basically with a residential place for the monks belonging to the jainist uh, jain and buddhist uh, they contain of a main hall assembly hall and dining chambers from the hall deep into the rocks cells are uh, provided for meditation now chatyas are basically used as a uh, a prayer hall and they have a, a small rectangular doorways which opens to a vaulted hall with an upside in in at the end there is a stupa now we'll talk about the different cave traditions in western india so it host many buddhist caves dating back to the 200 bc 
mainly there were the three type of architectural uh, you know, designs the first one is the upsidal vault roof chapter hall the second is a uh, upsidal vault roof pillarless hall third one is the flat roof one triangular hall and uh, this having circular chamber at the back this type of, uh, of hall or caves are found in the pondivite in maharashtra the second having the pillarless hall which is found in uh, thana nagpur in maharashtra now the first type is found in the pitel phora ajanta and vaja caves uh, these are all these caves are basically belonging to the post maurya architecture now karla cave uh, uh, is the biggest rocket having biggest rocket chapter hall it was excavated and decorated with a human and animal figures some of the important viharas are uh, at ajanta caves uh, and uh, caves of vedsa and nashik cave now bihara caves at nashik were excavated from front pillar carved with the ghata base and ghata capital with a human figure other cave site are bhaja caves near pune and buddhist cave uh, kanheri cave in mumbai uh, junar has the largest cave excavation now this uh, bhaja caves have been the question uh in 2023 okay well uh uh now uh cave tradition which are followed in eastern india uh that is type of okay so buddhist cave which were excavated in this coastal region of the andhra pradesh and uh, odisha guntepani cave uh, present in andhra pradesh this cave were excavated in the 200 bc uh, we can write it here Now, uh, this cave is relatively small compared to the cave of the uh, Western India, and it is among the unique sites where structured astupas, viharas, and caves are excavated in one place. Uh, it uh, had circular chapta and rectangular vihara caves. the other sites of the caves uh, in andhra pradesh is the uh, rampiram pallam anakapalli and dhanya kataka so dhanya kataka was in question of upc planetary tree and this is the prominent buddhist center under the maha sangika uh, sect of buddhism so this has been in the question now udaygiri and khandgiri uh, they have inscriptions kharvela jain king uh, uh, of kharvela jain king and according to this inscriptions the cave were meant for the jain monk uh, jain monks only and the figure of this caves are voluminous and move freely in the picture space some caves in this complex were excavated later also Sometime in the eighth or ninth century, so a few of the caves, ah, uh, is me, जो है, ah, basically, ah, uh, the time period is eight hundred to nine hundred AD. कुछ जो caves हैं, वो इस time पे design किए गए हैं. now there are numerous single cell excavations 
also okay we'll move to next yeah uh this is stupas basically where uh larger in size from the earlier and uh, this is stupas become more decorative uh, in compared to the maurya period and uh, a stone used have been increased in place of the wood as we have uh, as seen in the previous slides that in maurya period wooden uh, are given more emphasis in term of a uh, stone now stunga dynasty introduced the ideas of the toranas uh, that is the gateways so we will see uh, this toranas in the bharut stupa and sanchi stupa mp now uh, we will talk the uh, architecture and development of the gupta period uh this gupta period uh, or gupta empire is often held as the golden age of the ancient india early gupta uh, rulers encouraged buddhist architecture but the latter uh, will uh, emphasize on uh, over temple architecture now uh, during the gupta period mural painting on the wall of the caves become an added features of this period men uh, we can uh, say that mural painting have been added from this gupta uh, architecture another first one is uh, ajanta caves which have been in the question of 2016 and 2031 so ajanta is a series of rock cut caves and all arranged in a horse so say and this is located in uh, sahyadri hills by the gorge of vagmura river in the aurangabad district of maharashtra it having 29 caves in total whereas 25 are viharas and 4 are chakyas the ajanta caves were inscribed by the buddhist monk under the patronage of the vakataka kings hari sena uh hari sena is the most uh, uh, being a most prominent one in ajanta cave the sculpture of buddha in the garg griha is in the classical model heaviness is in the general character of this sculpture a uh, sculpture of yakshis and hariti with children are significant here uh the popular painting a uh, popular bodhi sattva avalokiteshwara painting is depicted there uh, as a sculpture now cave number 26 is the biggest and carved with a variety of buddha images and the biggest one of uh, uh, this cave is being the maha parinirvana image well uh, they have basically uh yes uh, uh, ajanta caves having four chapters cave and uh, second and first uh, century bc mein bana hai now cave number 10 and 9 and the latter phase of the 5th century ad or uh, cave number 19 or jo kaisix hai wo लेटर फेज ऑफ द फिफ्थ सेंचुरी एडी में बना है और केव नंबर टेन एंड नाइन जो है वो सेकेंड एंड फर्स्ट सेंचुरी बीसी में बना है इट इज लार्ज चैप्टर विहाराज एंड इज डेकोरेटेड विद स्कल्पर एंड पेंटिंग अजंता इज ओनली सर्वाइविंग एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द पेंटिंग ऑफ द फर्स्ट सेंचुरी बीसी एंड द फिफ्थ सेंचुरी एडी नाउ दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑल्सो uh next one is a uh, okay so ajanta and elora both are uh, recognized as a unesco world heritage site now this elora cave well uh, this is located in aurangabad district 100 km away from the ajanta cave it is excavated from the basalt cliff in the chandranagari chandranagar Chandra Nandri Hills, and it is a group of thirty-four caves, uh, whereas seventeen Brahmanical belonging to the uh, Hinduism, 
12 Buddhism and 5 Jain. This uh, has been the question of uh, 2013. Now, these caves were uh, developed between the 500 uh, to 1100 century uh, AD and uh, it is newer as compared to the Ajanta caves. Uh, and they have the diversity in terms of the theme and architectural style. This pillar are massive. Uh, Ajanta cave have been uh, excavated double story caves, whereas uh, Elora, we will see the triple story is a unique achievement of this uh, Elora cave. Now, Buddhist cave, uh, we will uh, search about that the shrine Buddha uh, images are very big in size and uh, they are generally guarded by the image of uh, Padmapani and Vajrapani. Uh, the Buddhist cave uh, has many of the images belonging to the Vajrayana Buddhism like uh, uh, Tara, uh, Mahamayuri, Akchobya and Avalokiteshwara, Maitreya, Amta. Uh, these are the belonging to the Vajrayana Buddhism. And the central figure is Buddha uh, found in the three sagacious postures, mainly meditating, uh, which is called the Dhyana Mudra. And uh, uh, the next is the preaching, that is Vyakya Mudra, and the touching the earth by the index finger uh, to the right hand, that is called Bhumi Aspars Mudra. So it is uh, okay. Now, Buddhist cave represented the goddess by the way, carved images of the Tara and uh, Hadiravani Tara, uh, Chunda and Vajradhat, Vishwari, Mahamayuri, Sujata, uh, Pandara, Bhrikuti. Uh, these are the goddesses uh, which are uh, uh, represented uh, in this way and the carved images. Uh, are basically represented in the form of goddesses. Uh, now we have discussed this, the, all the mudras uh, of the Buddha, uh, this kind of... Well, uh, now uh, Jain caves, here five Jain caves are also there, uh, which having uh, the figure at Yacha Matanga, uh, Mahavira and Parshanath and Gomateshwar. Uh, and then Kailasnath temple or uh, cave number 16, which is a monolithic in a stru uh, monolithic structure, and it is carved out uh, of a single solid rock. Uh, this temple is uh, said to represent Kailas, the abode of Lord Shiva. And the temple was built by the Krishna one uh, of the Rastakuta's dynasty and uh, the temple is two-storied. Uh, the features is two-storied and uh, Kailas temple is uh, on the first one. The lower story has carved a uh, life-size uh, elephant which look uh, like they are holding us uh, uh, up the temple on their backs. So this kind of a structure are also there. Uh, the temple exterior has uh, images of Savite and Vaisnavite deities. And the courtyard has uh, two yoke pillars with the flag uh, stuff and uh, Nandi Mandapa. Okay. Now we will see that uh, some... Okay. Uh, yeah. So we will found the uh, different kind of uh, sculptures, uh, mainly wedding ceremony of Goddess Shiva and Parvati are also there. Uh, and um, uh, Ravana, uh, which is lifting of Kailas mountain. So yeah, this is belonging to the Savite. And uh, uh, the destruction of Maha, uh, Mahishashur by the Goddess Durga. Uh, these are beautiful uh, sculptures which are found there and uh, 
Interesting sculptures are also found there that uh, river goddess Ganga mounted on a crocodile. And the river goddess uh, Yamuna mounted on a tortoise. Uh, Shavite thin is basically belonging the uh, Ravana lifting of Kailas mountain and Andhika Shurvada and Kalyan Chandra. So these are uh, sculpture belonging to the Savite and the Vish uh, Vishnuite different uh, avatar of the uh, Vishnus are there. Uh, and uh, different avatars uh, have been depicted there. Now we will discuss some more uh, caves, a speciality. So cave number, uh, I guess 10. Uh, let's see. Yeah, cave number 10 basically is called uh, Viswakarma Caves or uh, also called as uh, Carpenter's Cave. And Buddha seated in uh, Dharam Chakra Mudra in this uh, with a Bodhi tree carved at his back. And cave number 12 uh, having a stout female figure which uh, depicted wearing uh, a waistband and a headgear of a cobra. And uh, Khadri Vani Tara also holds a cobra in one of her hand in the same cave. Cave number 14 that is Ravan Ki Khai. Cave number 15 is the Dashavatara Temple. Cave number 29 is Dhumara Lena. Cave number 30 is Chota Kailas. Cave number 32 is Indra Sabha. Cave number 33 is Jagannath Sabha. This is all 30, 32 and 33. Uh, belonging to the Janki. Okay. Now, Elephanta Cave. Elephanta Cave uh, is uh, its location is near Mumbai. This is also called Elephanta Island or Island of uh, uh, Ghora Puri. Uh, this is uh, built. Uh, around 500 to 600 AD. Uh, we can say mid of the 5th and 6th century AD. And uh, it was originally a Buddhist site. Later it was dominated by the Savite faith. Well, uh, it uh, also, we can say that it is a uh, contemporary with the uh, Elora. And having famous, uh, been famous for its uh, sculpture, it is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it has been five Hindu caves and a pair of the Buddhist cave. The most important cave of this is uh, Mahesh Murti Cave. Uh, so we will keep remember that it is belonging to the Elephanta Cave. Now come to the Bagh Cave, which is located on the bank of Baghura, uh, Baghni River. And uh, it is present in the Har district of uh, Madhya Pradesh. And it is a group of the nine Buddhist caves. And uh, it is also developed, it is known that it was developed around the 5th to 6th century AD, mostly during the Satvahana period. And uh, the most significant cave is the uh, Rang Mahal. Now come to the next uh, cave that is. Uh, that is Junagadh cave, uh, which is uh, located in Gujarat. And uh, its unique feature is the pre-science uh, pre of its 30 to 50 feet high citadel, which is known as Upper Court in front of the prayer hall. So this is the speciality of Junagadh. Next one is uh, Mandapeswar caves. Bori, uh, Borivali near Mumbai, also known as Montaperi Caves, and uh, it is developed in the late Gupta period as a Brahmanical cave and was later converted into the Christian cave. Now, Udaygiri Cave and Khandigiri Cave are uh, present in Odisha. Uh, it is located in Vidusa uh, Udaygiri. Okay. 
दिस उदयगिरी केव इज डिफरेंट बेसिकली या आई एम सॉरी दिस उदयगिरी दिस उदयगिरी केव बेसिकली इट इज नॉट द दैट वन वेल दिस इज नॉट दैट वन एक्चुअली सो लेट मी राइट दिस उदयगिरी इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैट ऑफ द उदयगिरी एंड खंडगिरी ओके फाइन सो Uh, this Udaykiri Caves is located in Vidisha uh, MP, and uh, it uh, created. It has been created in the early 500 century AD uh, under the patronage of the Chandragupta II. And this culture, we will see the important one is the Varaha or Bor incarnation of the Vishnu uh, God Vishnu, and this has been the part of. Prelims twenty fourteen and fifteen also. Now a stupa site uh, we can uh, see that Shamat in Rupi. So uh, keep memorizing this one. Ratnagiri, Odisha, uh, Mirzapur, Khas in Singh, and Dhamik stupa in Varanasi. Uh, Devani Mori in Gujarat, an important uh, stupa site. Outside the Gangetic Valley, and this site is vaguely dated to the 300 uh, century or 400 century AD. So keep remember. I know uh, that is not uh, written here. Well, now come to the topic of Indo-Islamic architecture. so this uh, architecture started with the ghurid empire basically and ghurid uh, occupation of india at the end of the 12th century ad so the muslim had combined varied designs from the shashnai shash uh, shashanian and byzantine empire which they inherited with the local culture giving rise to the indo saracenic or indo islamic structure uh, they introduced new element uh, namely uh, such uh, calligraphy ornamentation uh, using inlay work uh, trabeation brackets domes etc and the important feature of this indo islamic architecture is uh, arcuate style of architecture replaced the traditional trabeate uh, style of the architecture and uh, this introduced the use of the minars around the mosque now let me discuss the next that is uh, uh, the next important features uh, is mortar was used as a cementing agent a uh, muslim forbidden to replicate living forms uh, uh, on any surface and developed their religional art religious art and architecture consisting of the art of uh, arabesque geometrical patterns and calligraphy on the plaster uh, and stone a uh, arabesque and ornamental design consisting of intertwined flowering lines leaves and flowers okay uh the building has intricate jali work also been uh, seen there which significa uh, signifies the importance of light in the islamic religion as we have seen uh, that they basically bows uh, in front to the uh light okay uh and uh, use of water in the courtyard pool fountains and uh, small drains gain uh, importance water are uh, used primarily for uh, the three purposes mainly uh, religious uh, purposes or uh, maybe decorative purposes also and to pull the premises there and they introduced the charbagh style of garden in which a square block was divided into the four 
identical garden. Next is the Pitra Dura technique and it refers to the pictorial mosaic work using semi precious stones. Now tessellation, it's a technique for decoration of walls and floors with a mosaic. Next is foreshortening technique. Uh, it makes the inscriptions appear closer than they really are. Now, uh, arcuate uh, style is a newer one and uh, the traditional one is the trabeate style. So basically we will categorize and uh, the difference between this will be seen in the next step. That uh, uh, in the new style of arcuate style we will use uh, the arches and domes whereas in trabeate style uh, there has been the use of brackets, pillars and uh, lintels. Okay. So yeah, uh, here uh, lintels, well, in tablet style, that is the uh, traditional style. Now, an arch is needed to be constructed with the uh, vases. Vases basically it's a series of interlocking blocks fitted with the keystones. Well. And in the arcade style, use of hemispherical domes on the top of mosques, and uh, here minars are uh, present on the four corners of the mosque. Well, and uh, in this lime plaster, bricks and mortars were also used for the construction work. In the uh, traditional uh, style of the Trabiate style, uh, that has uh, Minar is absent there, okay, and the use of the conical or curvilinear sikhar on the top of the temples. Uh, then a stone has been the primary component of all the constructions. Well, we will deal with the categories of the styles. So, the categories of the styles and the study of Indo. Islamic architecture is conventionally categorized into this four of the um, the first one is the imperial style uh, which will be seen in the Delhi Sultanate and the next is the provincial uh, the provincial style will be uh, seen in the Mandu, Gujarat, Bengal and the Jaunpur region the Mughal style will be seen in the Delhi Agra and Lahore region and the Deccan style will be uh, seen in the Bijapur, Golconda. So, imperial style uh, basically uh, flourished under the uh, various dynasties that ruled during the Sultanate period. And each ruler imparted certain characteristics of his own. Okay. So, in imperial style, we will deal all the four of uh, five uh, dynasties uh, uh, right from the Slave dynasty, Khilji dynasty, Tughlaq dynasty, uh, and Lodi dynasties. So, in all the dynasties, a different pattern you will be seeing. Uh, the first one is the slave dynasty, in which the style of the architecture during this period is known uh, as Mamluk style of architecture. Most of the constructions during this period uh, were remodeling of the existing religious architecture. The tomb of Balban was adorned with the first true arc. The Qutub Minar, uh, Qutub Minar uh, which is divided into the five-story building, initiated by Qutubuddin Apple and later completed by the Irtutmis and Pirotsa Tughlaq. It come uh, to associated with the Saint Khwaja, Qutubuddin Bakhtiyar Kaki. Uh, Pirotsa Tughlaq rebuilt this. Uh, it's a two story and it is the highest stone tower in India right now. Uh, the minar having the mix of polygonal and circular shape and it is largely built of the red and buff sandstone with some of the marble in the upper stories. It is characterized by highly decorated balconies and bands of inscriptions intertwined with foliated designs.
this uh, slave dynasty uh, also built uh, Qutub Minar with uh, Uslam Mosque in Delhi. What uh, Uslam Mosque basically also built by Qutbuddin Abak around uh, 1197 AD and then Athai Din in uh, Ajmer uh, these were all uh, the kind of architecture found in the imperial style uh, in the period of slave dynasty now uh, in under the patronage of Khilji dynasty, uh, this style is known as Seljuk style of architecture. Well, uh, Khilji dynasty ruled uh, from 1290 uh, AD to 1320 AD and uh, established this kind of uh, style of architecture. Motor began to be used by, uh, prominently as a cementing agent. Uh, Khalji architecture is characterized by its use of red sandstone and uh, arcuate style. Uh, renewed by marble, uh, recessed uh, arc beneath the screens, uh, perforated windows, a large dome, and a genuine arc in the shape of the pointed horseshoe. The introduction of uh, encaustic tiles as an element of decoration in the panels of the building. The cities of Tughlaqabad, Jahanpana, and Pirujabad are the example of this dynasty. Uh, in, in this uh, Tughlaq dynasty, uh, well, Okay, now in Tughlaq dynasty, uh, it basically focused more on the strength and less emphasis on the decoration. And it introduced the style of constructions known as batter. So, batter is the style basically. A style called batter style. This uh, kind of style focus on the strength, less on the decoration, uh, is the, uh, known as better. So, better style, Tughlaq dynasty. Better style of construction, Tughlaq dynasty. Uh, now, uh, it was uh, characterized by the sloping walls to give more strength as seen in the tomb of Giyasuddin Tughlaq. Okay. Their feature include the use of the stone rubble as the principal building material, the uh, experimental use of four uh, centered arc, that is arc beam, combination is a hallmark of the Tughlaq dynasty, uh, the emergence of pointed dome and octagonal plan in the tomb, in the tomb. Okay. Now, next is the Lodi dynasty. Lodi dynasty, a large number of the tombs were built in and around Delhi without any lavish decorations. These uh, mausoleums were designed on the octagonal plan. So, the important uh, thing of this is octagonal plan. Let me write this. Lodi dynasty ka one of the important features is octagonal. Octagonal plan. Uh, now, double domes were also been introduced there, which consisted of a hollow dome inside the top dome. Sikandar Lodi's uh, tomb, Delhi, was the first garden tomb uh, built in India. Uh, then the Now, uh, in Tughlaq uh, period, basically, Tughlaq, uh, Muhammad Tughlaq and Piroj Tughlaq. 
are known to have built a large number of the sarais in Delhi, such as uh, uh, and they also built wells and steep wells, which is also the part of the Delhi Sultanate architecture. Gandhar ki Bawli, built by the Altutmis at Mehroli, Delhi, is one of the steep well there. And uh, public buildings of the Sultanate period comprises of the sarais, bridges, bawlis, dams, uh, kacheris, kachari basically, administrative building, uh, Kotwali police station, dark chauki that is uh, post uh, station, hammam uh, that is public bath, and katra uh, market uh, places. So, Sarai uh, was introduced in India by the Turks in the 13th century and the earliest mention of the existence of Sarai is from the Balban time, and that is 1266. So, this was an important uh, uh, public buildings of the Sultanate period. Now, we will uh, talk about the provincial style. So, well, uh, this is the provincial style. Provincial style uh, incorporated the local architectural style of the provincial kingdom of the Bengal, Gujarat, Jaunpur, Golconda, Malwa, and Deccan, giving rise to uh, the provincial style. And some of these provincial features were Bengal. Uh, Bengal roof with sloping uh, cornices with uh, originating from bamboo constructions were adopted by the Muslims. Uh, in this brick was a cheap material, building material, and the use of a stone was limited largely to the piers. Uh, covered brick and glazed tiles were uh, usually pressed into the service for decoration purpose. For example, include uh, Kadam Rashul Muska and uh, Dakhil Darwaja in Gaur. Adina Mushk in Pandua and uh, uh, Darbari Masjid in Bangar. Uh, Siddhi Shahid Mushk in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. In Jaunpur, uh, uh, it was patronized by the Sharki rulers and it avoided the use of minas. Uh, the basic features of the Jaunpur is uh, uh, minars are absent there and uh, it include uh, Atala Mosque, Lal Darwaja Mosque in Jaunpur. They having uh, no minars. Okay. Now uh, Malwa, yeah. Uh, Malwa involves uh, environmental adaptation as seen in the large windows, arches, Artificial reservoir uh, called uh, Bowdies etc. So a prominent feature was uh, use of the different colored stone in marbles. Example is the Hindola Mahal, Rani Rupmati Pavilion, Jahaz Mahal, Asrafi Mahal. Uh, these all are of the Malwa. Now uh, Deccan is also known as the Bijapur style. And uh, it was developed under the patronage of Adil Shah. Uh, the construction of this style was uh, characterized by the three of the officiant, the card, uh, bulbous dome, and use of the cornices. Uh, iron clamps and strong plaster of mortars were used to strengthen the buildings. Iron clamps and strong uh, plaster of mortars. The ceilings were without any support and the walls uh, were also decorated with the rich carvings. Gol Gumbaj in Bijapur, Karnataka uh, was built in this style. Gol Gumbaj was built in as a burial place of Muhammad uh, Adil Shah. Adil Shah, uh, the seventh Sultan of the Adil Shahi dynasty, uh, ruled between Solas of uh, 1626 to 1656. Now, Gumbad complex has a Nakar Khana, a ceremonial drum house, a mosque and a sarai. It was built uh, using dark grey basalt combined with ornate plaster work. 
Timuri type person influences are evident in its domes, arches, and geometric emphasis. It uh, has the second largest dome in the world. Uh, Bol Bumbaj. The Whispering Gallery, an acoustal marvel along the dome's drums, uh, can magnify and echo sound repeatedly. Uh, Victoria Memorial Kolkata also has a whispering gallery, same like that. Apart from Victoria Memorial Kolkata, uh, whispering gallery is in the Gol Gumbaj. Okay. And Gol Gumbaj, the important thing is, uh, uh, it is the, it has the second largest dome in the world. So, keep remember regarding the Deccan provincial style. Uh, now we will uh, talk about the Mughal style. Well, yeah, this is all about the Mughal style. And uh, in this Mughal style, uh, Mughals were the great patterns of this art and architecture. Uh, the first of the Mughal is Babar. He undertook the construction of mosque in Panipat and Rohila Khan. And then Humayu come into picture. He led the foundation of the city named Denpana city. And Humayu Tom Delhi. Uh, it's the first distinct example of the Mughal uh, architecture built by his widow uh, Bega Begum. Uh, basically not mentioned here. Okay. It is a synthesis of Persian architecture and Indian tradition. It has high double dome as well as uh, Chhatris, which give it pyramidal shape from a distance. And uh, it has a Charbagh style garden. Uh, the red sandstone double story structure of the mausoleum has been raised over a series of the cells, which are like a musical composition. The octagonal form of the central chamber contains the cenotaph. It is for the first time and red sandstone and white marble being used there. After Humayu, Seir Shah has been have had been the ruler of uh, uh, Delhi. So during Seir Shah, in his period, a phase of the transition from the Lodi style to the Mughal style of the architecture, he built Purana Kila Delhi. And uh, Kila Kohna Masjid in Delhi. He also built a uh, Sesa Sufi Masjid in Patna and uh, Rota's Fort in uh, uh, Pakistan. So it is also important because Rota's is also in India, uh, in uh, Bihar, a district. So Rota's Fort. Keep remember, this is in Pakistan. And uh, uh, Seir Shah also built uh, the Grand Trunk Road uh, as the name of uh, Sadeke Ajam. Uh, so this was uh, the old name and uh, also been later called the Grand Trunk Road. Then come to the Akbar, uh, the son of Humayu, uh, come to the rule, uh, come to the throne of Delhi. And uh, Akbar was the beginning of the golden period of the Mughal art and architecture, and was the was a blade of the Hindu and Islamic style of the construction. So in his uh, uh, architecture. We will uh, see the fusion of Hindu and Islamic style of constructions. And uh, principle, basic principle, I can say that uh, principal features of this, uh, his constructions were the use of red sandstone. So keep remember, Akbar used red sandstone and widespread use of the tabiate constructions. The arches uh, are used mainly in the decorative forms rather than in the structural form. Uh, the domes uh, were sometimes hollow, but never technically of the true double border. Akbar's uh, building project can be divided into the two main groups. 
each uh, representing a different phase. The first phase comprised the building of the fort and the few palaces at Agra, Allahabad, and Lahore. The second phase related basically to the construction of his new capital at the Fatehpur Sikri. So, uh, Agra Fort, today known as the Delhi Gate of the Fort, and Jahangiri Mahal was the only representative building of the Akbar reign. Jahangiri Mahal is considered uh, as a robust building in red sandstone. Gardens are built in the Charbagh style, and most of the structures uh, present inside were built during the reign of Shah Jahan. It contained a uh, Diwani arm which is known as Hall of uh, Public Audience and Diwani Khas, Hall of Private Audience, both built by the Sahaja. Then Fatehpur Sikri is founded as a token of the gratitude to uh, Sikh Salim Chisti and uh, it has been described as a frozen moment in history as a building here represent a unique blend of Hindu and personal style. It was the new capital of the Akbar, uh, of the King Akbar. And all the buildings uh, are in characteristic rich sandstone using traditional tribute construction. This structure was built from the local rocks and assembled without the use of the mortar. Important buildings inside uh, the city of the Fatehpur Sikri, that is Bulan Darwaja, built in 1578 to commemorate Akbar's victory of the Gujarat, is the highest gateway in the world. This, have been the question, this has been the important question of 2018 also. Salim Chisti's tomb, it is the only building at the Fatehpur Sikri built of white marble. Now other buildings uh, include Panch Mahal, uh, Pachisi Court you know, for playing chess, Jama Masjid, Hiran uh, Minar, Jodhabai's Palace. These all are the work of Akbar. Uh, next is uh, next is Govinda Deva Temple in Vrindavan was built in red sandstone by Raja Mansi. But the stone for the construction of temple was donated by the Akbar. So it is his uh, good contribution for the temple also. Now next one is the Jahangir. Jahangir focused more on the painting rather than architecture. Some of the constructions under his reign uh, were Akbar's tomb in Sikandra, Moti Mahal Lahore, Salimar Bag and Nishat Bag in Kashmir. Uh, then his uh, wife ja uh, Noor Jahan commissioned the uh, construction of tomb of uh, Itmad Udola in Agra, made of the white marble. And then after his son Shah Jahan, uh, Mughal architecture reached uh, its uh, climax under his uh, uh, reign. His buildings are full of the delicate carving in uh, marbles and inlay with the Pitra Dura work. The arc uh, become foliated and the dome become bulbous with a Constructed make and a uh, pillared pillars rest with shaft capital. His notable construction includes city of Shah Jahanabad, uh, today Old Delhi, present day Old Delhi. Moti Masjid made of uh, made exclusive of the marble in Agra Fort Jama Masjid at Delhi and Lal Kila at Delhi and the Taj Mahal. Red Fort Lal Kila is near uh, the old course of the Yamuna River and uh, there are two gateways, Delhi Gate and Lahore Gate. Notable buildings inside the fort which are Diwan e Aam and Diwani Khas, Moti Mahal, Hira Mahal and Rang Mahal. These are the part of the raid fort and uh, Diwani Khas also said that marble one supported the uh, peacock throne. The well, a state, known a statement, uh, if there be a paradise on earth, it is this, it is this, it is this. Our 
emblazoned on the wall of this marble castle okay so about taj mahal uh, which was built by shah jahan and uh, it was built for his beloved wife ajuman banu begum known as taj mahal the chief architect of taj mahal was ustad ahmed lahavri an indian of persian descent it is all the features of the mughal architecture like calligraphy pitradura charbagh style garden next is aurangzeb he was uh, puritanical and did not take any of the active interest in any of the architecture the major building of his reign include the mausoleum of his wife rabia ud dudam bibi ka maqbara in aurangabad the badshahi masjid in lahore and moti masjid at lal qila delhi an attempt has been made to mimic the taj mahal in the mausoleum of his wife in aurangabad uh civil works of the public utility during mughals breach over the gomti river at john johnpur and the west yamuna canal now baba imam bara located in lucknow uh, was built by asafu dola in 1784 this structure has been by interlocking bricks without the use of the mortar in his constructions in its construction next is rumi darwaza is also located in uh, lucknow it was also built by the nawab of awad ashafu dola it was built using brick coated with the lime it has been the question of today again now the next one is the modern architecture so uh, yes modern architecture the introduction of this modern architecture constructions and planning occurred after the arrival of the british into india the main aim of this architecture was to house their organization uh, their people and whatever was necessary to control a big empire like india so we'll see different uh, influence the first one is the portuguese influence introduced the iberian style of architecture in india they also introduced the concept of pco houses and the baroque style involving the use of the contrasting colors example of the portuguese construction is say cathedral in goa basilica of the bomb jesus goa the fort we will see the uh, architecture of the french influence that brought uh, the concept of urban city planning and developed the town of uh, puducherry uh, chandranagar mahe in kerala karaikal in tamil nadu and yanam in uh, andhra pradesh other example of the french institutions are a church of the sacred heart of jesus in puducherry uh, puducherry and the sacred heart the church of the chandranagar west bengal now we will see that the british influence uh, british influence brought then brought with them the gothic style and merged it with indian structure indian architecture and that resulting into the indo gothic style of the architecture it is also called new roman architecture uh, which emerged in the post 1911 now new gothic style uh, is uh, okay yes indo gothic style is a unique blend of indian persian and gothic okay let me write so we are discussing indo gothic style which also include indian style so indian persian and gothic well uh that collectively is called uh, victorian style the buildings uh, are large and elaborate with inner wall compared to the indo islamic era 
the arches were pointed unlike the uh, curving arches of the indo islamic era their large windows are unique features of the victorian style uh, example are victoria memorial in kolkata gateway of india in mumbai now new roman style the work of edwin lutyens and herbert baker were the finest example of this style example new delhi uh, government complex it was the confluence of all a style of architecture which made this style congested and cramped as a result of a hybrid nature of the construction simplicity modernity and utility were highly compromised the focus was more on circular building and there was a overuse of the oriental motif to realize western architectural uh, designs the next is a uh, post independence architecture now two schools of architecture emerged as after independence the revivalist and the modernist but both could not break away from the colonial hangover resulting in a decline in the standard of the architectural tradition of india an example of this modern architecture is uh, the uh, chandigarh designed by lee corbusier the supreme court and the rashtrapati bhavan these all are the post independence architecture so what we have uh, discussed today is all about the indian architecture including the architecture of ibc maurya architecture post maurya then gupta architecture indo islamic architecture basically uh, explaining the mughal style provincial style and all the uh, imperial style this kind of styles then after modern architecture uh, in the next we will discuss about the temple architecture of india so temple architecture is different in which we will uh, study about the early temples then uh, further developed uh, architecture of the nagara style dravida and vishara and the other other regional styles so for this uh, okay